Hello all, this is James Johnson, and I'm back here with more Planet Zoo content. Though this Planet Zoo content is not going to be the Jamestown Tiger Refuge. This Planet Zoo content is going to be about advanced tips on how to play the game successfully. Now I've logged quite a few hours here in the uh, beta, and... I feel at this point that I am qualified to go ahead and put out this video. Um, I often find myself answering lots of questions on the forums and things of that nature, and I do feel like I can benefit you, the player, in learning how to get your feet off the ground and starting a successful franchise in Planet Zoo. And that's going to be the point of this video. I have 14 tips that are anywhere from pretty novice to quite advanced information that I want to make sure you know. Okay, we're going to go ahead and freeze the game right away here. So, amongst my tips, I'm, I'm, I haven't even, I'm not even going into pathing. Uh, I'm going to uh, not uh, try to claim that I'm an expert in pathing. There are several other YouTubers who are coming over from Planet Coaster who understand the building side of this game far more than I ever could. Uh, go watch some guys like Jaunty, who's known as Geekism, uh, probably the best builder there is in this game. There's uh, Rudy, um, he's an amazing builder in this game. Uh, so go watch those guys if you want to learn how to build and properly utilize the pathing system. Actually, there's a, a palsy. He does a lot of uh, tutorial videos, and I'm pretty sure he has a tutorial video for pathing. So go check that out. So typically when I start off, I just go ahead and select by grid um, off of the actual uh, ticketing stand, the entranceway, and get my first semblance of road laid out nice and thick and wide because, you know, you want a nice wide area so that people, uh, there's going to be a lot of congestion in this area and you don't want them to get hung up. But no, the important things that I want to cover is tip number one, start small. I cannot stress enough how important it is to start small. So that is uh, the first thing we're going to go over is starting small. Now I recommend grizzly bears. And the reason I recommend grizzly bears is they've got a pretty high appeal rating and they can be bought with cash. And I'm going to demonstrate how to buy them with cash using the market. That's going to be another tip that I want to show people is how to properly use the market. I keep hearing all over the forum and every place else that they can't get a hold of animals um, without spending obscene amounts of conservation credits. And that's just not true. You can get a hold of tons of animals in this game if you just have a little bit of patience and a little bit of know-how. So we are starting off with grizzly bears in a small enclosure. Um, that's going to be step one. Now I'm going to do uh, There are a lot of ways to hide your staff. 
staff paths are a must. If you put a staff path into the game, uh, so you can see I just built staff path off of the end of this thing. Your visitors cannot walk on the staff path. Only staff can walk on the staff path. So I'm starting this out off a lot like I started my Jamestown Tiger Refuge. And only because I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel to show you how to do something right. Now for the sake of, of speed, I'm just going to toss down a pre-built uh, contraption that I've built myself. It's probably under blueprints. Just wanting to line it up as close to the current grid as possible. So it's been somewhat lined up. Now be aware that when you, you place things like this, um, you can see that I put these paths in here already and that was just kind of a bad way to set up this blueprint. It causes a little bit of issue. So with this blueprint, there's important things in here that can't be gotten to right now because this is not a walkable location. This is not a walkable location. So if I just left this staff building as it is, nobody would be able to get to this facility, which is the veterinary surgery, which would be pretty important. Nobody would be able to get to the transformer um, to fix the power, and nobody would be able to get to the water treatment plant to fix the water treatment plant. So these facilities need to have access ways as far as roads to get to them. So we're going to go ahead and throw some access ways in here. Alright, what I've done is I've removed the curbs on the ground. Um, this is important because if there were curbs on the ground, it would block entryway into these buildings. But with the curbs on the ground removed, uh, staff should still be able to walk into here. Now I'm going to uh, just remove that. I'm going to get rid of a line to grid and I am going to connect up these as best as I can. So 
another thing that's not in here there is no keeper hut in here that is important to know that I did not put a keeper hut into this facility and there's a good reason for that I want to be my keeper huts as close as humanly possible to the gate of the pen so let's go ahead and put a pen up here because that's going to be important for well everything if we don't have an animal to test off of this is not going to be a very good uh, test video to show you how to properly start the game You're going to notice that I'm using something that is, well, not a barrier to act as a barrier. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use null barriers. And null barriers is one of the 14 tips that I want to share with you today. Um, null barriers are a very, very powerful tool that are going to make your game better. So you can pre-formulate any number of things um, for the purposes of your games and have them available for your playthrough. All right, thank you for bearing with that very boring portion of this guide. So, tip one, start small. This is the very first thing I want to drill into your brain is always smart your, start your zoo very, very small. One animal type. Fully research that animal type. We're going to start off with grizzlies because, as I've said, they're, they're an excellent starting animal that has... Uh, very high appeal and you can buy them with cash so I'm gonna throw a gate in because you have to have a gate in uh, you have to put a, a habitat gate into a facility in order for the facility to work as a habitat I'm gonna kind of play with the length till I get a good length that fits in this gap. Twelve was just right. Now I'm gonna select the wall and I'm gonna hit Edit Barrier. I'm gonna pull this up until it goes to 425. Now for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, I have to then pull back down to get it to get to 4 meters, because 4 meters is pretty much your standard enclosure height. Um, just if you go with a 4 meter uh, high wall, 
that will be good for just about every animal you can ever imagine. So think of four meters as being your your your, your go-to height without having to check the Zoopedia for stuff. I'm throwing in my habitat gate. There, we have a habitat gate. Now we need uh, a keeper hut and the ability for the rest of the staff facility to hook to this. So we're going to go back to baths. If you ever make a little mistake there, just back click. There you are. Now, I'm going to grab my, my keeper hut here in facilities. I'm just going to use the pre made keeper hut because it's good enough for government work. I'm going to twist that around and I'm going to put that straight across from the gate. I cannot emphasize the key to having a keeper gut hut as close to the gate as humanly possible. This is one of the most important things you can do to make this game efficient. Efficiency for your keeper is the key to winning this game. If, if there's anything you get from this video, it should be that. Now we need a place for uh, our people to be able to see our grizzlies. So I'm just going to make a quick little uh, route up here from the path. Alright, they will easily be able to walk up here. Um, this keeper hut is kind of close, but is it close enough to be seen? Right here is your radar mode. This is important to know. This radar mode is very, very useful. Click it. Find uh, negative impact on guess. Click that. We can see the staff facilities have a negative impact on guests. If a guest was to walk into any of this area, they would get angry. As you can see, this is a long way away from there. So, you don't have to worry about any negative impact on guests here because it's plenty of a distance away. So there's no need to put trees here, there's no need to try to put a wall up, none of that. It doesn't matter. The only th way that there's a negative impact on guests is if a person walks into that radius. It, it, people just magically sense these staff buildings whether they can see them or not, folks. But it's not that hard to keep a staff building away from people. It's it's a very small area that they influence. All right, so now I need uh, some grizzly bears and I need some staff. Hold the phone here and don't go nuts buying staff. Vendors, you don't need any vendors right now. You don't have any vendor stands. Security? Well, you might need that once you start getting up and going, but at this point in time, no. You don't need the security guard. You will need a mechanic. 
the mechanic needs to fix your water and power. He needs to fix this habitat gate. He's of some importance. So plop him down. Um, when you're starting, you're going to definitely need a keeper. He's going to be the guy cleaning out this pen. He's going to be the guy feeding people. He is going to be using this building to do all of that. He is very important. And then the other very important person is you're going to need a veterinarian. He is going to research things that are going to make grizzly bears happy. He's going to treat any wounded grizzly bears. He is going to deliver animals to and from places. Uh, caretakers will also help with that if you have a caretaker. But these are the three people that you need to start with. If you want to be a cheapskate, you can start without the others. And those others being a caretaker, because the veterinarian will transport, so you don't need the caretaker to transport. Right now you don't have anybody making a mess, so you don't need to clean up after them. You don't have anybody causing security issues, so you don't need to look after them with the security guard. And you don't have any places selling anything, so you don't need a vendor. So if you start off with these three guys who also happen to be the most expensively paid guys, then you're good to go. You can knock these salaries down $50 on all of these guys without them having a negative impact. If you go beyond that, you will see a little thumbs down saying, hey, no, uh, 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 you need to pay me more money. So if you keep it at 1050 you're going to save yourself a little bit of money on these salaries right off the bat. Okay, now we've got some people in place to work in your zoo. Now we need to go about uh, getting a hold of our grizzly bears. Now this is on my list of things to talk about. Uh, the market how to properly utilize this market. It's very important for success in the game. This market is filled with ways to sort things. We're going after grizzly bears, so we are going to find the grizzly bears. If we look here, we don't... Well, there is one right off the bat here. Um, for money, so I'm just going to buy him even though he's got low fertility. That's fine. That's the type of animal you have to start a zoo off with. You, your beggars can't be choosers at this point in time. So I have a male grizzly. I'm going to need a female grizzly now, so I might as well sort by female. See how easy that is? Now I'm only looking at females. If I sort by age, I can go with adult, which is going to, should have gotten rid of the elderly grizzly bears, didn't. There is no young adult, but you can't put young adults up for work. So I'm just going to put adult here. And show cash listing. This is the important thing here. Now look, it's empty. Oh my god, it's impossible to get animals with just cash. Blah, 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 blah. Now let's go make an angry post about this on the forum and talk about how this game sucks. Blah, 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 blah. No. You see this clock? This is the refresh button. Look at that. Look at how quickly some... Uh, I'm going to get this one because it's got a little bit better fertility. That took all of, what, 30 seconds of refreshing before I seen animals come up for cash dollars? That is what I'm talking about, folks. Learn to use the market. You can get animals in this market, like hippopotamuses, for instance. Hippopotamuses have a big draw. Look, if there's, a hippopo there was, there's a hippopotamus right now that we can buy for cash. But people say, no, there's never animals down here for cash. Well, this animal's going to be gone shortly. See? Already gone. But if you were to stay around here, 
and wait a little while. Uh, click this a few times. Uh, see, look, another one popped up. That was all of a minute of trying to get another uh, cash hippo to pop up. So just because you don't see something right away, click the refresh button a few times, folks. It's your friend. Okay, so that's 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 most of the things I wanted to get to about the market. The market is a very powerful tool. Use it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to, to talk about is on the selling side. Let's say that I wanted to sell an animal, right? And I don't know how much to list it for. Well, use the market. It, You know, if you've got a lion, or you got a timber wolf, right? You've raised a timber wolf, and you're thinking about selling the timber wolf. Well, you come over here, and you're like, well, what are timber wolves going for? We're going to just show the conservation listings. We're going to try to click on this little tiny, very hard to click on bar so that we get a small amount, like 200. How many animals are being sold on the cheap? And how many animals are being sold for more? We can either easily see here that there's a whole lot of males up here, right? And you can get a male with pretty darn good genes selling for only 42. So when you put your timber wolf up for sale that you you got, are you going to want to put them at 200? Well, probably not unless you have some gold star timber wolf that maybe somebody wants to splurge on. It might be a better idea to, you know, mark your animal around 30 to 40 to 50 in price because it's more likely he might sell because he's he's going up against guys like this that have no fertility so just to take a little bit of time and look at the marketplace and figure out what to set your prices at don't just be like oh I don't know how much they should be priced I'm just gonna throw a number on it and hope it all works out don't be that guy all right, now let's get our grizzlies into the habitat. Oh, invalid destination. What is that telling me? That's telling me I did something wrong. I'm a bonehead. I need to show everyone how to use null barrier. So you find the end of your, your, your barrier here, click on it, it's going to want to default to this red brick. Go to Null, come over here, get rid of the annoying curve thing that's just blah blah blah. And find the right length. It's pretty close. And we're gonna get down here as small as we can. And we're just gonna, you know, pop these in here into this log wall that we created. And then once we get to this point, it'll just automatically seal up. Now we can close this. 
And now how do we know we set up the null barriers correctly? Well, if we click on the gate, it will show habitat one ready, green bar. So that means all the null barriers have been put up and they've been sealed. If this was a red bar and said something about habitat needs to be fixed or something like that, then you screwed up on one of these null barriers and you have to go through and figure out which one didn't properly connect. Now, null barriers are basically uh, telling the game that the animal can't get past here because we've figured out a way to be smart enough to make a barrier that an animal can't cross that isn't a barrier in the game. Now, what is the benefit to this? These barriers are class 3 barriers. These are the best barriers in the game because they cannot be broken by an ostrich, they cannot be broken by an elephant, they can't be broken by anything, and they do not take any wear and tear, so the mechanic does not need to fix them because they are not technically barriers. They are just random uh, constructions that you took out of the game. So you're outwitting the game at this point in time. You are putting up barriers that don't require maintenance and these barriers are as good of are better than most barriers in the game because they are the best barriers. They're they're class 3 barriers that can't be broken. So why not use null barriers? Use them all the time. You don't have to fix them and they're better than every other barrier. So learn to use null barriers, folks. Okay, so that was one of my things on my list. That was number eight, null barriers. So we've, I'm crossing up number ten, the market. Number eight, null barriers. Number one, start small, because I've told you we need to start small with just, um, with just uh, the grizzly bears, right? Uh, I've. I've talked about staff buildings and hiding them away and keeping them efficient. Yes? So that's number six on my list, so I'll cross that out. Uh, now we're going to work on number five on my list, setting up proper enclosure. The easiest way to do that is to just go ahead and come in here to Animal Trading. Tell your people to toss your grizzly bears into the habitat, please. We, we want the grizzly bears in here. Okay, so people are going, the game is actually moving, things are happening, the vet's running off to grab the grizzly bears, the keeper's in here to be like, huh, I wonder what I need to do. Well, there's no food trace, there's not even any animals in here. Uh... I guess I'll wander around for a bit. <clears throat> Maybe visit the rec center, see what's on TV. And here comes the vet. He's running in here to deliver one of the grizzlies. And woohoo! Grizzly deliver. Now go ahead and pause the game. Find your grizzly. And look at the habitat section here. Habitat has severe environmental welfare issues. He's not a very happy camper. His terrain is completely out the door. Had plants, they just are not appropriate to what he wants. So, click on terrain here. Huh. He likes uh, a little bit of short grass. He wants to get rid of all this long grass. This long grass sucks. He can't stand it. He'd like to have more soil. Go ahead and click on that soil icon. Look, woo, we, we got this cool thing that just popped up here. If it doesn't auto pop up, if you can't figure out how to get it, well, go here to the thing next to paths and find terrain. Now we are going to just, you know, start plopping in some soil, right? bring up the intensity, go on size 5, that's fine because at this point in time that long grass is your enemy, it's your mortal enemy it's 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 like a cockroach, it just won't go away no matter what you do, you think you've gotten rid of all the long grass but no, it's still there, it's still there okay, now 
what is he going to think of this now, dirty habitat? Well, it's a, it's a little better than it was, right? <clears throat> He's like, huh, okay, now there's too much soil. But hey, we got rid of that long grass, and the short grass is fine. Though, he wouldn't mind having a little more short grass. So, let's give him a little more short grass, shall we? Knock the intensity down. Go around the edge, throw it in there. Get some happy little short grass here and there. You know, br bring out your, your inner Bob Ross. We'll just put a happy little grass there and some happy little grass. Oh, we're, we're getting on the edge of grass here. So we need some rock, right? Dropping some rock rough right in there. Uh, still need some more rock. How about some, some smooth rock? Get it nice and smooth. Hey. We've got all this terrain good, right? But this is a grizzly bear. Isn't a grizzly bear going to want to, like, swim around and do something in the water? I mean, sure, why not? Let's let's give them some water to swim around in. Let's, let's push down a little section of land. Maybe right where this rock is. Well, oh, yeah, I'm holding my push to talk. If you hold control, it'll do the opposite of what you want uh, to happen. So I'm going to have to stop talking to you guys. And you see how it just pushed down there? That's... That's probably enough water. Now we're going to find the water dropper. Now notice that there's this blue ring. That's where the water level is going to be. Sometimes you can put it in lower. And sometimes that's not good. Just move around and figure out the different levels that you can put the water at until you get what you like. Now, the important thing here is that all these bars are green because that makes a happier grizzly. But we don't have a completely happy grizzly yet. If we unpause time, we're going to notice that we indeed took care of the terrain, but we did not take care of the plants nor the hard shelter. Now, in order to avoid messing around, I've got a blueprint here that will put a cave in. We know grizzlies love caves, so that should take care of his hard shelter. But if you're wondering, we can just click on him, click on habitat. You see the hard shelter here? Go ahead and start the time. Boom. Hard shelter taken care of. Now pause it up again. Plants. Huh. I'm not from the United States. Well, I obviously am, but I'm I'm not from the United States. I have no idea what a grizzly bear wants. What makes a grizzly bear happy? What type of environment do they live in? Well, I don't know. I do actually, but but I'm pretending to I don't know. So I'm gonna come up here to this wonderful handy dandy guide called the Zoopedia. This is number eleven on my list, folks. This Zoopedia is imp. Important. It's not just here to be a zoopedia, something you might look at because they happen to throw it into the game as fluff. This is not fluff, folks. This is important information that's going to make your game more successful. Yes, there is this write-up stuff that you don't necessarily have to read, but some of these different parts inside of the zoopedia are pretty important. Like, for instance, how big does your enclosure need to be per grizzly bear? One grizzly bear is going to want to have an enclosure that's 750 meters squared. Huh. Important information to know. Also, how warm or cold does the grizzly bear want things to be? The grizzly bear likes a temperature between negative 10 and negative 28 degrees Celsius. God, I hate Celsius. But anyway, that's a different story. Grizzly bears have a life expectancy of 26 years. Huh. 
Okay, so they get pretty old. A male bachelor size, one. Female bachelor group, one to two. What does this mean? If you have a properly sized pen that can fit three adults, three times 750 meters squared, math, yes, we hate math, we can have two females and one male in a pen before things start to go nuts. Male bears will fight over foraging grounds and mates. Mating system is promiscuous, so the bears like to get around. This is all important information to know. Number of offspring per mating event, one to two. Gestation or incubation period, it's going to take eight months for that cub to be born. Interbirth period, 60 months. So after that cub's born, don't expect to have any more cubs for at least five more years. Which means if you have a 20-year-old uh, female that just gave birth, well, that's likely the last birth she's ever going to have because the age of sexual st sterility is 25 years and it's a minimum five-year cooling off period before she can give birth again. So if she's 20, add 5, 25, now she's sterile, she's going to die at 26, yep, yeah, you're not getting any more uh, cubs out of that uh, bear. So, important information here. Use it, folks. Everything you ever need to need to know in here is here. Like, for this instance, we're setting up this biome. We need to know that taiga, temperate, and tundra are acceptable within the continent of North America. So, I, pr I prefer temperate. I want to make a temperate enclosure here. So I'm going to go with temperate North America. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the nature tab. And I'm going to use this filter tool. I'm going to find the continent. I'm going to select North America. I'm going to find the biome. I'm going to select temperate. Now, no matter what I put down in the ground, the bear is going to like it. Because it's part of his natural habitat. Wow, you're kidding, right? I don't have to just guess at what I need to put into the pen. No, you don't. Everything you put into the pen at this point is going to be fine with. Well, unless you put too much stuff. It's not going to be fine with that. So throw in a happy little tree there. Let's get a happy little tree there. How about a happy tree? Some bush type stuff, right? This I'm not trying to make anything that looks amazing here. I'm just tossing some stuff down right now. And ending group. Oops. So this this cave thing is a group. All right, so I've got a little stuff plopped down. If we select the bear, go to his habitat, go ahead and start things, we're going to know that his plants should have changed. They did. What's going on? There's not enough coverage, right? So I'm about halfway to the amount of plants that he wants. Put in that big old beech tree. Give him all the coverage he needs. Now he's a happy bear. It's that easy, folks. It's that easy. Uh oh. Temperature. Temperature is a problem. And temperature is indeed a problem. So if you were to go to barriers, or not barriers, to habitat, and you wanted to find the temperature thing here, 
there it is, right? But maybe you were recently sorting things that are important to the grizzly bear. The, the cooler just vanished. What? But the cooler is needed for grizzly bear. If you don't know that, you might be like, how the heck do I get a cooler? Not aware that you need to deselect grizzly bear to get the cooler to pop up. This is something that confuses people, and people miss out on it, and then they ask, how do I build a cooler? Because they had grizzly bear selected, and they never saw that cooler pop up. So, let's grab a cooler. So that should take care of most of this path. Now we know that the grizzly bear is negative 10-ish to negative 28 Celsius. You can adjust these cooler temperatures. Um, right now it's set for 0 degrees Celsius. Um, but a grizzly is comfortable up to 28 degrees but that's the high end of his threshold. If we plop this down to somewhere around here, like maybe 18, that's 10 degrees cooler than what a grizzly is comfortable at being 28, well, that's plenty cool. And by doing that, we use less power. Three sixty-seven here. Change it up to 18, we lose less power. Now, the grizzly is going to want some food, right? They're, they're going to get hungry real soon. What kind of, of, uh, of feeder do we put in here? Well, we don't know search by grizzly. This is where searching by grizzly is useful. We can discover that if we use a large food tray, it'll be it will be good for a grizzly. If we use a large water pipe, it'll be good for a grizzly. Put these things close to the door. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Put them close to the door. So everyone's like, well, we need to put the food somewhere where it's going to make the animals travel to so that the people can see. You know what? Hogwash. The most important thing about your zoo is the efficiency of the keeper. Keep that food tree near the boat door. And keep that door near his hut. The keeper is more important in this equation than how well your customers can see the bears. Remember that. Live it. Learn it. Remember that. Who cares how good the view is for the customers because they will complain if the bear is two feet away from them or 200 feet away from them. They're going to say, ah, the view's fine. So don't bother trying to make the perfect view for them. Go ahead and toss some bedding in them for them. And right now, that's that's all that we can do to make their lives happy, because we don't know anything. We don't know any research. So we're going to start the game. We're going to go to zoo. We're going to find the vet research tab. We're going to find the vet. We're going to click on research. And we're going to start researching the grizzly bear because this is number two on my list. Number one on my list is start small. And we have done that. We have started small. But number two on my list is research. Research is the key to this game. We need to research everything there is to know about a grizzly. And that's going to make us money. So while we're waiting for the research to happen, uh, 
we're going to find this gate and we're going to change the prize up to seven and four. Then we're going to find facilities and we're going to find the donation bin. That little guy there. We're just going to liberally spam them down there, wherever we can put them. Can't put them on a grade Now, next thing I'm going to show you is educational speaker. Select my grizzly bear. Adjust the volume a little to whatever desired level you want. I'm going to put it at 10 here. And now that's going to educate all those people. And because the speaker is over here, the people can't vandalize it. No vandalism, less reasons to need a security guard. Habitat education stand, same thing. So we got that grizzly sign out of arm's reach. They can clearly see the sign. They can get educated, but they can't break it. No need for a security guard if they can't break it. All right, just get that educating going. Pop in some some bins to keep the rubbish from getting thrown on the ground. Notice that the bins both show blue, even though this one shows green. If you click on it, you'll see a planet, planet zoo bin, and you'll see a planet zoo recycling bin. It's just a bug. For whatever reason, the recycling bin is put down blue instead of green. And we have research. We have found out something about a grizzly bear. This is important. What have we learned? Pause your game. Find out what it is you've learned. How do you find that out? You come over here to the Zoopedia because the Zoopedia is your friend. You find your grizzly bears. You click here on research status. Oh, you have another level of food. This is so important because food makes happy grizzlies. So find that habitat gate because this is tip number three. This is the third most important thing I can tell you about. I've told you about starting small, which is number one. We're doing research, which is number two, but right here. How to change the animal, the food quality. Click on the habitat gate. Go to the paw, which is animals. 
come down here to habitat content find food quality change to grade 2 better food happier grizzlies but that research it also unlocked other things it unlocked this fire hose ball toss that in there so your grizzlies can play with them it's gonna make them happy grizzlies then there's this guy so I'm gonna tell you right now uh, something I know about this roller this food enrichment item will keep your keeper from ever throwing food down here He'll, the, the keeper will just concentrate on filling up this food enrichment toy over and over again but you know what it's not a bad thing because this food enrichment toy will actually keep the animals fed so this is one of those situations where that food enrichment bug doesn't cause a big problem because usually when animals don't get fed here they don't have enough food and they starve but this guy here will feed your grizzlies it will provide them adequate nutrition both of them even though it'll keep this from getting fed but because it's in there it's gonna make them happier because it's an enrichment item now right now when we start the game pow 100 percent enrichment this is the key to making these donation bins get filled with lots of money this is the key to starting the game because when you have really really happy animals like this you're gonna have really really happy guests and those really happy guests are gonna do really funny things like throwing lots of money into the donation bins Okay, so I've gone over um, tip number four, toys, enrichment toys. We get these enrichment toys by doing the research. Make sure you put those toys in. Every time you, you figure out more toys that your animal wants, get them in that pen. The more toys you have, the happier your animals. That is important. Happiness to the animals is, is everything. It really is. We've gone over proper enclosures already. That's number five on my list. I showed you how to find the proper plants to put in here by just filtering the biomes. Um, maintenance schedule. We have not tweaked maintenance schedule. That's number seven on my list. These buildings are of the utmost importance. This is a power transformer. It needs to be in good repair. How do we keep it in good repair? Well, you don't want it to be visited every year. You want it to be visited every three months. Water treatment plant, same thing. You don't want it to be visited every year. You want it to be visited every three months. That's going to keep these guys um, in good repair. If they stay in good repair, your life is much better because they won't break down okay so that was number seven on my list I'm gonna cross it off here uh, number nine is education which I've shown you how to hide the edgy make the education items so that they can't be vandalized so I will cross that off the list. Use Zoopedia. I think I've shown you how to use Zoopedia. I'm, I'm not going to stress how important Zoopedia is. 
for your gameplay. If in doubt, check it out! So that was number 11 on my list. Use the damn Zoopedia. Number 12, avoid fights. So, if I threw another male in here, it would cause fights. You don't want that. Um, you're going to find that your animals, when they're happy, they're going to breed. And they're going to have kids. They're going to have cubs. And those cubs are going to grow up. And if, you, if one of those cubs is a male, he's going to fight with his dad. And you don't want that. You need to get rid of one of those males to keep the fights from happening. Don't... Like Timberwolves. People make the mistake with Timberwolves all the time of trying to create this pack of Timberwolves. Well, and then they say, well, I can't make this, this huge pack of Timberwolves because they're constantly fighting. And they're constantly dying up my vet. And yeah, they are constantly fighting because they're constantly trying to figure out the pecking order of dominance. It's right there in the Zoopedia. So, avoid fights. Keep your vet happy and keep your vet doing research and not fi fix fixing up battle scars from wounds that he doesn't need to fix up because you could have sold the animal to keep it from happening so avoid fights that num that's number 12 on my list uh, number 13 more animals less space right so right now we've got fine space here uh, but if we were to throw in, say, another grizzly, that that space amount is going to go down because each grizzly is going to make the required amount on this pen more and more and more and more. Now that's not so big of a factor when you're dealing with grizzlies because grizzlies are pretty happy in a pretty small area. But hippopotamuses, oh my God, you're going to be slamming your head against a wall with hippopotamuses because they like to have at least three people in their social group and two of those are going to be females which means you're going to have two to four uh, baby hippopotamuses running around which they need space too the next thing you know you have four babies you have three adults that's seven hippos and you need an enclosure the size of Rhode Island and you didn't plan for that you didn't even plan for it closely. You you put in the bare minimum to support two hippos, not even realizing you needed a third hippo. And now things just go nuts and out of control because they are so unhappy about you not giving them enough space to start with. So remember the concept that more animals require more space. All right, vendors. I've avoided placing any vendors down because at this point in time, I only have about 100 people in my park. There is only one vendor type that's going to be of use at this stage. And that is the information stand. And now, I want to get one thing straight here. The info stand is not going to make you rich. So you can toss down an info stand if you want. And people will actually use it right in the very beginning. But should you? I'm going to say no. This info stand is not going to start actually making money. And what I mean by actually making money is the info stand, in order to make money, needs to sell more stuff than the salary of the person working in it. And that's not going to take place until you have a decent population in the zoo. Right now, the population is small. And so dropping down this info stand right now you can get customers, but the number of customers are not going to pay off the yearly wages of the person working in it. So I recommend against using the info stand, even though you can use the info stand at this point in time. This is the only vendor that actually works right off the get-go. 
and I'm putting him down just to show you that he does work off the get-go. Alright, we got some more uh, research there. And he's going to get to work. Now let's figure out what we just learned in the Grizzly video. We didn't unlock anything new to put in here, but we did unlock a fun fact, which is going to help with your education efforts. So that's going to be more stuff going on the the sign and from the education speakers, which is going to make the educating better, which still helps your zoo. So right now, we're making profit. Not a lot of profit, but we are making profit. And all we have is one animal in the zoo. But why are we making profit? It's because of donations. And why are we getting high donations? Because we have happy animals. Why do we have happy animals? Because we're researching our animal. We're learning all that we can learn about our grizzly to make sure that he's the most effective animal he can be in the zoo. And he's only going to be if the most effective animal he can be in the zoo is if we research everything we need to research off of him. So this is what I'm talking about by starting slow. Now we've got the third level of research. There's still quite a bit of researching to do on a grizzly bear. What did we learn this time? Well, nothing that's going to actually help us here in with the habitat stuff, so we're just going to keep on plugging along. And see, we have a line here. The, the guy is working right now. We only have 82 people walking around the park, but the info stand is selling. Just gonna fast forward a little bit here. I don't recommend fast forwarding much in this game because this game is already on fast forward as it is, but at this point in time, this is one of the few times you can get away with fast forwarding because yeah, you, you have one animal to micromanage, and that's not that difficult. So that habitat cleanliness is going down, right? You're starting to wonder, hey, what's my keeper doing? Well, why not find out what your keeper's doing? Oh, he's in the pen, cleaning it up. 
He's on the ball. You were about to read him the riot act. But no, he's on top of things. Alright, we got more research. We're up to one, two, three, four of eight on the grizzly. And we have unlocked cardboard boxes. So get down to that habitat, find yourself a cardboard box. And toss it in there. Make your grizzlies happy. She's gonna sit down and look at the box. He he's gonna roll it around. So, we're still making money. That's the important thing right now. So, Inspector is arriving, he's coming. That low welfare is probably because someone stepped outside of the temperature cooling area. Research, more research done. 
What did we learn this time about our grizzlies? Rubbing pillar. Still not type 3 food yet. Cleanliness, he needs to get work. And remember, I still only have a bare minimum of staff going on right now. There's one vet, one vendor, one mechanic, one keeper. I don't even have a security guard. I don't even have a caretaker. And we are making not that much money. You know, 500 or so a year? So if we were to, you know, go overboard, like have two vets, like a lot of people try to start off the game with two vets. That's a recipe for disaster. And this time we learned nothing big. Oh, we learned level three. Level three food. Important research. So change that food quality up to level three. Did we just learn more research?
All right, our bear research is almost done. And we still haven't got the last two items yet. But we do have an inspector that's going to be coming at any moment now. Inspector has arrived. Uh, inspector's going to come over here. And he's going to look at Embre. And he's going to want to make sure that Embry is happy. And he's going to see Embry, and see Embry has 98% welfare, which is going to make the inspector happy gonna be like that's a happy bear I'm a happy inspector that enclosure is five stars and there's the inspector So the inspector saw Embre and indeed decided that's one happy bear and gave five stars. So we got five stars for cleanliness, we got five stars for habitat one, we got one star in education. So education's our weak point. And research collected. We're done with grizzlies. You know what that means? It's time to expand the zoo. So now, well, the last thing I would recommend here is think about what you're going to expand into. So you've got this nine levels of research on uh, grizzly bears, which actually I need to put in the last bits of heavy items for grizzlies. There's still something locked here. So prey scented sack is, is the last thing that we got here. So now what other animal might like boxes, might like prey scented sacks, might like rubbing pillars. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what animals would like these things. What about this? Click on them! Whoa! Whoa! The game tells you information. It says, hey, the American buffalo likes this, the African elephant likes this, the black Formosa black bear, Gemsbach, grizzly bear, Himalayan brown bear, hippopotamus, Indian elephant, rhinoceros, zebra, antelope, giraffe, antelope, springback. So that's that. Prey sack. Uh, Formosa black bear likes that. Grizzly bear likes that. Huh. Bears have a lot of things that they share. Oops, didn't mean to do that. That's fine. Just take it out that way. Um, 
this large roller feeler. Himalayan brown bear, grizzly bear, Formosan black bear. They all like those things, right? Fire hose bar, Formosan black bear, Himalayan brown bear, grizzly bear. Huh. I could be cheeky and know all the toys that the Himalayan brown bear or Formosan black bear would want to have in their pen. Maybe I should expand to one of them. So then you look at your animal trading, right? You're like, hmm, I want a bear. So you search by Himalayan brown bear and Formosan black bear. And look, we can get Formosan black bears for money. So I suggest, hey, that would be a good thing to expand to, wouldn't it? It makes sense. It goes with what you already know, and you don't have to recreate the wheel. Start with grizzlies, go to black bears. Now you'll have happy black bears instantaneously. You'll have two animals that'll have good appeal ratings. And because now you have two animals, you're going to have twice the draw, twice the numbers of people. All of a sudden, your zoo is going to start to really bring in buckets of ducats. Then, when you sell a grizzly, when one of your grizzlies gets pregnant and one of your black bears gets pregnant and you start to sell some of these cubs, and you start collecting the, the conservation credits, get yourself some Himalayan brown bears. And again, you have everything unlocked for them. And now you're really making buckets of ducats. You see where I'm going here? See how easy this game can be if you just use that thing that sits up on top of your neck inside of that skull? Yes. The last thing, the only thing I really haven't hit on this list because we never got to the point to hit on it is vendors. We touched on the fact that you can use the information vendor right off the bat. But at 300 people, you can start throwing in the, the drink stand. At 500 people, you can start throwing in the food stand. And at about 1,000 people, you can start throwing in the balloon stand. Don't bother putting those stands in before then. They're just going to be a waste of time. You're just going to be spending money uh, paying a staff person who's not going to be making you money. Anyway, I'm James Johnson. I'm going to end this video now because it's it's probably longer than I wanted it to be, but I really wanted to make an in-depth video that really hammers home all of the key things you need to do to be successful inside of this game and how it can be easy to be successful inside of this game if you just start small, you research, 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 you adjust the animal food, you get the best toys in the pen, you prepare the enclosures right, you hide the staff buildings, you alter the maintenance schedules, you use null barriers, you figure out how to utilize education without having it vandalized by hiding it in the pen. You'll learn how to use the market to find animals for cash instead of conservation dollars. It can be done. I showed it to you nice and simply. There's a refresh button. It's easy to get a hold of animals for cash. You can use the Zoopedia, because it's your friend, the Zoopedia is something you should be using, especially when setting up your enclosures. You want to avoid animal fights. Make sure you don't have multiple males in the pen. Make sure to keep your, your group 
to the happy amount. Use Zoopedia. Zoopedia will help you figure that out. Um, the more animals you have in a pen, the more space is required. So you can easily run out of space with animals like hippos if you have too many in the pen. So make sure to properly make a habitat for the animal that you're going to be dealing with. It's a hippo habitat. It's got to be huge. Grizzly bear habitat doesn't need to be so huge. But think about the animal and what are the space requirements going to be when I have cubs, when I have more than just the two animals I started with running around. And then lastly, vendors, which I just went over. Information stand can be plopped down right away. Uh, drink stand at 300 people. Food stand at 500 people. Balloon stand at 1,000 people. If you stick to that, to, to those concepts, you're going to have a successful zoo. And you can then become as creative as you want to be. You can make the coolest looking things you've ever seen in your life in this game. Because this game has an amazing uh, ability to just get wrapped up into the complexity of building and making something look nice. You can immerse yourself into this game and you'll have all the funds to do it if you stick to this roadmap of success. Anyway, I'm James Johnson, a.k.a. Software Blade. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. Hopefully this content is useful for you to figure out how to play this, this game that can be so frustrating at times, especially on a new player. Um, and if so, smash that like button. Help me out. I'm a tiny, tiny, tiny channel. Any likes you give me are just huge. You have no idea. And if you were to sub, that would be amazing. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, take care. Have fun. Peace.